smile. Simon Brooke hired a cleaner and soon learned who was boss. When I first took on a cleaner, I thought that I had finally made it into the world of the rich and famous. A life of relaxation and luxury lay before me as I practiced over-the-shoulder requests for tasks to be completed. As I went off to my health club, Mr. Muscle and I would be strangers from now on. Anyone who wants to know what it is like to have staff might want to see a play entitled The Servant. <coughs> It tells of the power struggle between an obsequious but manipulative domestic and a weak, insecure master. I will not be among the audience. The whole thing is a little too painfully close to home. From the very start, my relationship with my cleaner did not work out quite as I had planned. My first applicant, who was a very stern Polish woman in her late fifties, interviewed me rather than the other way around. In the end, after some consideration, she declared that yes, she would be happy to clean for me. She ran her finger theatrically over a radiator and grimaced at her blackened digit. Then announced what she would charge me and demanded her own key and told me when she would visit to start cleaning. Gradually, it dawned on me that Mrs. K, as I shall call her, was not a cleaner but a cleaning lady. And she was fully aware that people like herself were rare and could pick and choose just who they would work for. My next challenge came with the choice of cleaning materials. Mrs. K looked snootily into my cupboard and dictated to me the particular products that she required me to purchase for her. Perhaps I am too humble to employ staff, for I just cannot give orders, and if I could, then perhaps my cleaning lady would have accepted her role accordingly. I did try to leave her notes that were neatly handwritten, suggesting some little tasks that I would be very grateful for her to undertake should she have enough time. Needless to say, they were treated with haughty disdain and left untouched on the table. I spent hours drafting them with opening sentences such as if you don't mind, I just wondered if, perhaps if there's time, eventually I just gave up. As a freelance journalist, I normally work from home. However, I felt that I simply couldn't be there when she was in residence. So I took to sitting on a park bench, feeding pigeons, and watching the clock until I could go back home. Rainy days were the worst. Three hours spent in a Starbucks coffee shop doodling on old newspapers and magazines. My fear of her critical eye became so great so that I began to prepare the flat for her arrival. Too much everyday dirt and blokish mess, and I worried about what she would think of me. So, I would empty the bin, do the washing up, and wipe around the bathroom, ready for her arrival. I was embarrassed.
rest at the thought of a woman with never a hair out of place, cleaning my dirty bath, toilet, and shaving bristles off the bathroom sink. Two hours before her arrival, I would be washing, vacuuming, polishing, but then I would panic. Things looked too spick and span, as if I was questioning her cleaning abilities. So, I would casually dirty them again and leave the old cup and pan in the sink, smear toothpaste on the bathroom taps and spill a dash of gravy over the cooker. My falling behaviour would deteriorate to such an extent that her favourite radio station would be playing gently in the background when she arrived. The heating turned up and her chosen brand of coffee and biscuits displayed for her. Eventually, despite all my efforts, I proved to be an unsatisfactory employer and I was sacked by Mrs. K. I didn't dare ask her for a reference.